now find ourselves in a very difficult, challenging world. Through the joy of experiencing an event like this, the coming together of people from different religions and races, cultures, we can help to bring about positive change. We create a playground where people can come together and experience the best possible form of themselves and each other. This is a magical place for that to take place in. I've been coming here for about 15 years, not just to play music, but I come here, my downtime, just plot up on the beach in Tulum and just sit under the stars and eat some good food. That's my favorite place on earth. Yeah, oh, no, it has a very, very strong energy. It inspires me. I started to realize that playing outdoors meant something very special to me. My music can connect even further and deeper I want people to totally feel at one with nature and the natural surroundings. And when the music reverberates through them, they can feel not only the energy of what's being created for them around them, but also the natural energy that is emanating from this space and from this part of the world. The first day zero began to celebrate the date that the Mayans considered to be the end of the world, but that was actually a fresh start. So that was the, the closing of one cycle and the opening of another. That could have been a one-off event, but this land is still here. These people have such a beautiful story to tell. This is the fifth year of day zero, and I think I mean, I, I don't want to anticipate anything, but I have very good feelings about it. The Venus and the Moon are perfectly aligned. There's a massive the... alignment happening from the 21st, right? Where the, all the planets align. I've, I've not looked that far ahead. I'm only thinking about tomorrow. Well, okay. <laughs> <laughs> My grandfather was a massive influence for me. He kind of first injected that love of music and performance. When he was a kid, his mother was a performer in like the East End music halls. Um, my grandfather was like rolled out by my great grandmother like on stage to help her with her acts and stuff. We would do like performances in the living room. Uh, he would have to hide outside the door, and he'd say, uh, "Introducing for the first time on British stage screen cinema, Damien Lazarus." Most of my closest friends growing up, they weren't really massively into this music. I had a long period when I was going to like, parties on my own. I tried to get into the Wag Club in London when I was 12 and they didn't let me in. It was very important for me to create events that could showcase all this amazing new music that I was discovering. So we, we started this artist called Rebel Rave. Welcome to the Rebel Rave. I get very excited about events where there's like a, an electricity and a friendship and a personal connection with not only the sound but also the personalities. These parties started to get a little bit out of my control and I needed someone to help me take it to the next level. And then I met Freddie on the dance floor at Get Lost. Yes. At Get Lost Miami. It used to be my favorite party, but now it's just another marathon. <laughs> <laughs> well, we come from a completely different like, background, you know. Grew up in London and I guess I was doing a lot more of the kind of global techno traveling before you and... Um, You're also but, a little bit older, mate. Yeah, <laughs> just a little bit. It was important for us to build a really strong friendship. 
together first and for him to really kind of get to know who I am and what I'm doing this for. I feel like I have such a particular idea and vision for how I want things to be executed. I never really found anyone that you know I thought could actually pull it off. I was in the army in Denmark for six years as a platoon commander. Uh, and uh, I think putting on events for me is the closest thing I can get to like a, a non-war army machine because it's such a crunch time, everything's moving, all the engines on full steam. I really like that rush, you know, you have a big team, you have everything going on. Are we going to light from the floor up or not? No, look at this. Fairy lights everywhere. Oh, wait, there. Oh, they are. Oh, sick. So I just need to figure out if we can put a dimmer on them. Uh, we have bought them. We're trying to really use everything from inside this cenote park. But essentially, everything. all the materials are found materials. So the wood is from here, the palm, the most of the decoration is from here. Oh, this, this is the Indian one. one. This one is the only one. That the only have. one. Double like that. Oh, oh. sweet. Yeah. Oh. I thank you in right. kaleidoscopic vision. <laughs> Everything you see, everything you walk on or past, or every oh, moment of the event has been completely orchestrated. How many people would you say are working on this? Right this now, this second, right there's 170 people. Which is mental for me, because at some point in my career, that would be a really good audience for me. <laughs> we do parties all over the world. My core crew is five, 10, maybe for the bigger things, but here's 40. And that already creates a really good community feeling. And this year, it's been a lot of my girlfriends. Of which there are many. <laughs> so on, out of that 40, I think it's uh, 32 girls. So it's given a very feminine vibe to it and a very motherly vibe. So already there, we've had like this, uh, this really good energy on the team. But um, now let's walk through here. The girls, are, the girls are making it happen. I'm Kuna. I'm from Holland, from Amsterdam. I really believe that a party like this can only succeed when it's really driven by people that have passion. And as you can hear from Freddie and Damien, they're really doing it for the music and for the art and for creating something so cool for the crowd, you know? It's, it's really about the experience. Damien is just such a purist and that's something you really feel. I think you can learn from that journey that he's taking you on. These are the parties you will remember. It was very inspired by taking your mind into another dimension and finding weird sounds and interesting variations of melody and just finding some bizarreness in the music. When you do a party that's this big, it's hard to create intimacy. And we're so lucky to find a, like a piece of jungle that has like an amphitheater vibe. So I think, I think people were like a little bit blown away that they were so cozy and comfortable and, and intimate at such a big show. People have written to me saying that they met their future wife, you know, husband on the dance floor at our events or and had the most kind of life-changing experiences. Personally, I just want people to feel the energy and the love that we put into the creation of everything that we put together. When they feel the love that you put into an experience, they instantly want to repay that love and spread it. I don't want to get political, but I think this is a very difficult time for Mexico and for the general feeling towards Mexican people. This gives us even more of a reason to hold this event here and to connect with such a beautiful, welcoming, warm country and its people. I feel there are ways to conquer these issues. I'm not standing here saying that we're going to conquer it through music, but you know, can maybe help people maybe change their views about the way things currently are.
This place is nothing but love. <laughs>